Hey, ma'am. Ma'am, do you have like five minutes for a quick interview? You, yeah, you got five minutes? Sure. Thank you. Are you okay if I live stream and record it? Um, yeah, what is I, the interview? Just, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> I interview people to see if they believe in God oh, and why. I do. You do? Can we chat a little bit? Yeah. Are you sure. comfortable with that? Yeah, absolutely. Let me just get my camera put away here. And I'm standing in the shade because my equipment actually will overheat sometimes oh. if I'm not careful. Um, thank you for stopping to talk to me. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, we could just take like maybe three or four minutes, five minutes or so. Okay, that's um, fine. Were you heading to a class or something? No. Oh. No, I was just actually like walking to see if I could run into some friends because okay. I was just meet up with someone and they didn't, they canceled on me, so. Oh, that's nearly the identical reason why I was here. I just wanted to, because I have classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I just thought I'd walk through the campus. Okay. Just to run into anybody. Wait, um, are you in one of my classes? Christian classics? Are we in the same class? Yeah. Where do you sit? I sit on the right third row back, fourth row back. Oh, really? What is your name? Bree. You're well, Bri it's Brianna, but I go by Bree. Oh, pleasure to meet you. What is your name? Anthony. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I was like, you look very, very familiar. You, you, that, I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm horrible with like names and faces and stuff. It's okay, it's okay. How do you like the class so far? I actually really enjoy it a lot. Do you? Yeah. I don't like the reading. Like, it's really hard. Like, I have to really focus on it. Same here, but I, I think I just really enjoy it because it's not what I was expecting. I wasn't sure what to okay. expect going to it because I am a Christian. Uh -huh. So I was like, you know, yeah. what approach is the professor going to come across? But I think it's yeah. very respectful and very informative. It's a lot of reading. So it is a lot it's of reading. A little, it's sometimes over my head, but... I don't know. I know. You know, I was a little surprised because I thought that he might take more of a theistic tone, like this is true and we all need to believe this. Oh, you thought he would take I that thought he might. Like, because mm. didn't he say he was a preacher or a... I thought he said that he's not a believer. No, he has a degree in, in uh, theology, I think, or something. Okay. So but that's... That can mean that's kind of... Know. True, true. Um, Brianna is your name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I'm doing is just interviewing people, um, particularly people that believe in gods. Okay to find out the reason why they hold the belief. Have you ever thought about like, what's the main reason why I believe in this God? Yeah. You have? I have, why? absolutely. What's the, what's the um, He's very personal to me. Yeah? Um, God has shown up in my life in ways that I can only explain by the fact that he is ultimate power. Um, I've grown up, um, I grew up in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. and I have no idea what that does to the uh, to the live stream. Okay, I'm so sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Um, so you, anyway, you grew up in a family. Yes. Um, okay. We would always go to church. I mean, my parents actually yeah. were missionaries in Honduras, and that's where they met. What? Yeah. And so, I grew up in a Christian family, and I knew a lot about the Bible, and I knew a lot about God. Um, okay. But for for me, I thought that that was enough just to like know who God was. And I always assume, like, oh, I'm good, I'm fine. But I didn't have a personal relationship with God. And for me, that's okay. the number one thing in my life right now. Um, hmm. And so when I was about 14 year, years old, I actually went through a really hard time in life where I just was depressed. And I was kind of upset at God because I thought, you know, why am I not happy all the time? Yeah. Um, and the, God kind of spoke to me. And it's not that I heard, like, an audible voice. I just knew that it was Him who was telling me that. Um, I'm sorry. That's fine. I'm so sorry. That's totally keep, fine. keep going. Keep I'm going. fine. <laughs> you heard a voice? Um, no. It's not that it was an audible voice. I just knew. Oh. It was more like a sense that I knew that he was trying to say something to me. How and did you know it was, was, which God are we talking about? Jesus? Yes. How do you know it was Jesus and not some other God? Do you think your being raised in that family had any influence on it? I think it could have something to do with it, but I okay. think it's because I do have faith. You know, sometimes mm. that's, I mean, that's the number one thing you need, is faith. And so that's I... That's the number one thing. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you define faith? Faith is believing in something that's greater than yourself, that maybe you can't always explain. I mean, there is, there's been a lot of historical backup to back up the Bible, to back up who Jesus was and what Would he that did. be faith, though? That would be a way to, kind of like what we were talking about in class. Um, you know, um, where Anselm was 
was saying that, you know, he's giving a lots of reasons. Yeah. And to, to back up the faith that he already has, but it's not necessary. It's just sometimes something that gives you comfort okay. to know, like, okay, well, I do have this faith, but at least I can, in a way, prove it this way. But no, hmm. faith, faith doesn't need that, though. And so for me, when you don't God, need all that other stuff. You can just believe it with, yes. just based on faith. Yes, absolutely. Um, but when God showed up in my life, um, He basically said to me, and again, not necessarily in an audible voice, mm -hmm. but I got the sense that He was trying to get my attention and saying, "You're going through this dark period because you're not trusting in me, and yeah. you're not letting me have my way in your life." And so I had to completely surrender to Him, and I actually immediately felt this peace I had never felt before, and it changed my life 100. percent Are you saying that the you're you're certain that it's Jesus that you felt and that changed your life. Yeah. Is it and and you do you know this because of faith? I think so. I mean, um, I believe in the Holy Spirit. So I believe in the Triune God, God mm -hmm, the Father, mm -hmm. God the Son, which is Jesus, and yeah. God the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what brings people into faith. Can you define faith again for me? I, I didn't yeah. write it down on my whiteboard. I usually carry a whiteboard so oh, I can like, okay. write these definitions down. Uh, faith is believing in something that's greater than yourself that you may not be able to see with okay. your natural eyes. So that's kind of adding on to what yeah. I said earlier. But, um, if we... Um, let's say that the next person walking by is like a Hindu. Yeah. And I, I actually talked to one yesterday, actually. Uh, he believes in three different gods. Mm -hmm. Um, but let's say that we did find a Hindu who said that he uses faith to be confident that his gods exist. Um, and just, you know, I believe it and I really feel it uh, and I feel it strongly enough even though I can't see it and I know that it's true. How, how might a person differentiate the faith that he's using from the faith yeah. that you're using? The relationship aspect. You ask him, do you have a personal relationship with your God or your gods? Um, because I've actually have studied other religions and I've interacted with people of other religions. Yeah. I spent three weeks in Turkey last summer where... The what city? Um, well, actually I traveled to villages and towns, um, but we started in Istanbul. And 99% yeah. of the population is Islamic. Yeah. Um, but you talk to them and you start talking about... I would tell them about my personal relationship with God. And the looks on their faces were stunned. Like, you can't have a personal relationship with God. You can only serve Him. Yeah. And serving and they God is important they, to they, me. Did they not believe you? No, they did. They believed your they personal did, experience? They did. Personal experience is one of those things that it, it's personal to a person. I know that's like kind of, what is it called? Cyclical thinking oh, or um, circular? reasoning. Yeah. But it's true. You can't mm -hmm. deny someone their personal experience. If someone comes up to you and says, this thing happened in my life. Sure. It's one of those things that you can't be like, oh, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, uh, it's obvious that something happened to you. Mm -hmm. But... Um, if somebody was was viewing this from a skeptical perspective, they might be like, "Well, you know, how could she possibly know that that's really what happened? How how can you differentiate this experience that you've had from wishful thinking or perhaps a delusion or something like that?" Because I kind of did live with wishful thinking for most of my life, because I hadn't asked for a personal relationship with God, and yeah. once I have it, I mean, I talk to Him about everything. I I mean, I pray to Him, but it's like an ongoing conversation that I have with him. I go about my day and I talk with him. Does he talk back? Um, he uses his word, so the Bible is his word, and sometimes I'll think of a scripture and I'll read it and it's exactly what I needed to hear. Sometimes he uses other people. Are, is faith a component of your thinking when you decide that that's really what's happening? Absolutely, but I have to test everything against the Bible. And what I mean oh. by that is if I have a thought, yeah. Um, and I'm not saying I'm the best at doing this, but I have yeah. to pray about it, and then I have to think, okay, is this something that that agrees with what the Bible would say, because it is God's Word, okay. that's what I firmly believe, or is it something that maybe I'm just thinking, and I'm trying to reason out in my own head. So. I thought it was interesting that you said that you, you try to test it. Mm -hmm. um, what would a failure look like? A failure? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, you, you said that you talk to God, yeah. um, and then you get His Word back when you read the book, and then that's the verification that it's working. Is that what you're saying? I don't. And it's not that it happens every time. You know, it's not like I okay. I know to read a scripture every time. Okay. But I think that my relationship with God is so firm that I can just talk to Him, and yeah. um, I can come to Him with requests. But I can also just talk to Him about my day. Hmm. You know, He's my Father, but He's also a friend. You know. Yeah. What would a situation look like where you make a request or you talk to him and he's not responding back to you? He, sometimes he does that. 
And I think that it's human nature to think then, oh, well, then God's not there or, or God doesn't care. Okay. But sometimes his answer is no or sometimes his answer is you need to wait. And so... But you mentioned that you're testing it, but how would you ever know that, that it's not working in the way that you think it is? Um, if if right. when if when you don't get an answer, you're, you're just like, well, maybe I just, you know, it's just not my time. As far as the testing goes, it's not like I'm testing every single thing that I'm praying about or that I hear. It's if I, if I have a feeling that, oh, I'm supposed to do this or go this direction in life or I'm supposed to talk to this person. Yeah. That's what I mean, is when I need to test that. Like, is that really what God would want for me? But what would, a, I know that you're testing it. Mm -hmm. How would you, dis how would you discover that it's not functioning in that manner that you're just possibly I don't want to offend you but like what if you know what if you're really just talking to yourself and these are these are just items coming up in your mind how, how do you know for sure that this is just not your wishful thinking and it's really this God coming into your heart once again personal experience the feeling of peace that I have I have so much peace and joy and that's something that can't be taken away from me and there's been a lot of really kind of not great stuff that's happened in my life in my family yeah. life just um, financial or periods of where you know I feel like I am waiting a lot on God but I have that relationship with him so it's it's something again it goes back to faith because it's not something yeah. I can necessarily explain yeah yeah that Holy. he knew might tell me the same thing that he feels mm -hmm. this these God's working in his life you know um, and and believing in those gods gives him a good sense of comfort and you know he uses faith to get there if, if people can be using faith to bolster the personal experiences that they're having, but coming to completely different gods. Mm -hmm. Is faith really a reliable method for getting to a truth? I think it is, but I think it's something you do have to search out though, you know? Like for me, I do have faith, but I also study scripture. And I know that most everyone has faith in something, whether it's in a god, or whether it's in science, or whether it's in yeah. just their own selves. So, How do you know that the scripture is true? Because it's the word of God. And I mean, it's one of those things where I know that some people do believe the scripture is true and is straight from the, the mouth of God. And there are other people that think, oh no, it was just made up by mere men. Where are you at? Um, I believe it's 100% the word of God. Are you basing that on faith as well? Uh, faith with the fact that it is unchanging. The Over the years and years that the Bible's been around, yeah. it actually has not... Uh, it's only changed in translation, you know, we're okay. here, we're there. Whereas there's huh. other books from other religions that actually have been changed where they say, yeah. oh, God has added something to this. Okay. Um, and that's, that's yeah. not the case because the God that I believe in is unchanging and unfailing. And so is his word. It, it, see, I, I kind of sense there's two prevailing themes here. I want to kind of repeat this back. Mm -hmm. And if I'm off, please correct me because I really want to understand. Yeah. Um, Faith and personal experience, it sounds like, are really huge reasons why you're so certain that this God exists. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? In a way, I think personal experience isn't, it's something that kind of validates my faith or um, encourages me. Okay. But it's not like, because I, you know, as I said before, if something bad happens in my life, then I'm not going to use that. Because I could be considered a personal experience too. So I wouldn't use that to say, oh, well, then there's no God. It's more to say, okay. well, he's still with me through this experience. Do you use personal experiences only to conclude that he exists, but when you have a personal experience that might... Can you, can you never have... I don't think so. Can, I think well, it's can, really faith that I do believe that he exists, faith in his word, and yeah. um, even how he's shown up in my life. Like, he has told me to speak to people. I know this might sound crazy, but he has told me, um, given me a feeling, or I'm supposed to, for instance, go to talk to that person. Yeah. Um, I don't always obey that. I don't always listen to it. But actually, um, last week, I had that feeling. And mm -hmm. I went up to this girl, and I sat with her, and I said, this may sound crazy, but I'm supposed to pray for you. Is there something I can pray for you? And she told me this situation that had happened. I won't okay. give too many details, but that she literally did need prayer. Okay. Um, and in that situation, you felt, um, when, when that stuff like that happens, mm -hmm. that makes you think, oh, well, that's... My God, really? Definitely God that was speaking. Yeah, he's he's powerful, but he's willing to use me. And I'm just I'm just a girl, you know. I yeah. I make mistakes. I I'm not deserving of him using me to, to serve him, but he does. Do you? So. We we got faith, which is believing without seeing, and, and letting your personal experiences mm -hmm. influence this belief. Um, are those are those the best ways to get to to a truth? <laughs> Are, are, is there a, is there a possibly better way to discover if something's really true in life besides faith and a personal experience? 
faith and a personal relationship with God, I think, is the, the key components. Um, and it's not anything I can do, because I think in the past I would think, well, if I'm a good person or I just do X, Y, and Z, then I can get to God and I can get to yeah. truth. But as I have a growing relationship, deepening relationship with God, by reading His Word or by praying, mm -hmm. then my faith only increases. And so... What would lower your faith? At this point, nothing would. Nothing that happens in my life would lower my faith. And I can say that with 100% certainty. Hmm. And it's not something that I could explain to just anyone, necessarily, because if they don't see that, or they don't have that same faith, then it's really hard to explain. I have the Holy Spirit inside of me, and that's something that may be a little difficult for people to understand, hmm. but I do. I'm not sure if I asked this before, so forgive me, but it's if, okay. maybe I did ask this. You've got this belief, you're extremely confident that it's yeah. true, to the point where you're walking up to strangers and telling them, hey, I was told to come pray with you or whatever. Um, if, 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 it, if this belief really was just in your mind mm -hmm. and it, it's not true, how could you ever figure it out? If it wasn't true, how would I figure out if it wasn't true? Yeah. I don't even know if that's an answer, a question I can answer because I know that it is true. Um, Do you hold other beliefs that you're absolutely certain are true and you're not willing to entertain something that would get you to change your mind on it? Um, I don't think so. I think, I mean, I go to a public university and I've um, had many interactions with people who believe way differently than me. Um, you know, and, and I try to see things from other perspectives, yeah. but I still see it through my eyes of faith. And so, it, honestly, it's in every area of my life. It's not just like, oh, just my relationship with God. Like, I see things through my okay. relationship with God, not... Or, you know, do you uh, do you see any? Maybe let's just let's take, maybe look at other people for example. Um, that Hindu, for example, mm -hmm. he may be content to go the rest of his life being convinced that those three gods exist. And I think we probably agree he has a right to do that. He can probably believe in whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. But if he if he told me the exact same thing you told, you want to move in a little bit? Oh yeah, sure. Because uh, the sun just moved. Yeah. Um, if he tells me the same thing and says, Anthony, you know, I'm absolutely certain these. And he said Shiva and Brahma and some other gods. Like I, I'm I'm certain these three gods exist, and I I can never discover anything that would cause me to change my mind. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a a healthy position to take on a belief? I mean, in a way, that's the position I'm taking. But I would say that you would then have to ask about the character of those gods. Well, maybe not, let's not even get into that. But yeah. this guy here can go the rest of his life believing in these three gods. Right. And maybe not be open to a real truth that might exist. What you're believing in could be true. Is it healthy for him to maintain his belief, his confidence at such a high percentage? and not be willing to entertain or even identify anything that would cause him to to lower his confidence? I mean, I know that's what I'm doing, but I wouldn't say that it's unhealthy, but I mean, is this a person that you, you did speak to and they said that 100% is what they believe? He told me 90, but I'm just, for this, I mean, it's not it's not unlikely for me to run into somebody of a different belief that says I'm 100% confident. I, met a, I did meet a woman here that's a Muslim, 100%. So, <clears throat> while this is, I'm com being, trying to be completely honest with you, because um, you may one day see the video, but he's like 90% sure. <clears throat> but it's not unheard of for people to be 100% sure and to tell me, Anthony, I know this belief is true. I'm not going to budge on it. Yeah. I don't have a way of figuring out that I'm wrong on it, but I'm content with that. Is, is it a healthy spot to be, to be so sure that something's right that you would never accept anything to cause you to reconsider your position on it? I would say yes for me. And you know, it may sound, I don't know how it's gonna sound, but yes, absolutely for me and the beliefs that I have. Um, because I do know it's true and it's been confirmed that it's true. Um, Yet if it wasn't true, you have no way of detecting that it's not. Again, that's a difficult question to answer. You know, and I've, which I've already said because I absolutely know it's true, 100%, and I would never change that, so. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. That was really great. You. Can I give you a card?
Yeah, absolutely. It's got my email on it. Okay. And if you want to chat again, yeah. Um, what I'm really hoping, it's Brianna, right? Mm -hmm. What I'm really hoping to uh, do is maybe run into the same person a couple more times. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like a one-off and I never see you again, but I'd really like to keep unpacking this okay. discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank I'll you. see you in class tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right, thank bye. You.